Here's how bitter in the mouth begins. I fell in love with my great uncle Harper because he taught me how to dance. He said that rhythm was allowing yourself to feel your blood coursing through you. He told me to close my eyes and forget the rest of my body. I did, and we bopped our non-existent selves up and down and side to side. He liked me because I was a quiet child. He showed me photographs of himself as a boy. He referred to himself in the third person. This here is Harper Evan Birch, he'd say. The boy in those photographs was also a quiet child. I could tell from the way that his arms were always flat by his side, never akimbo or raised high to the North Carolina sky. We were both compact, always folding ourselves into smaller pieces. We both liked music because it was a river where we stripped down, jumped in, and flailed our arms around. It was 1975 then, and the water Everywhere around us was glittery with disco lights. My great uncle Harper and I, though, danced to Elvis Presley, Jerry Lee Lewis, and Fats Domino. We twisted, mashed potatoed, and winked at each other whenever we opened our eyes. My great uncle Harper was my first love. I was seven years old. In his company, I laughed out loud. I'm not ashamed to admit that I have tried to find him now in the male bodies that I lie next to, and I see him only when I turn off the lights, his bow tie undone, hanging around his shirt collar, a modest isosceles triangles concerning the fashion at the time. His pants cuffed and creased, his graying hair cut the same as when he was a boy, a wedge of it hanging over one eye, the other one a blue lake dappled by the sun. My great-uncle Harper wasn't where I thought I would begin, but a family narrative should begin with love. Because he was my first love, I was spared the saddest experience in most people's lives. My first love and my first heartbreak were dealt by different pairs of hands. I was lucky. My memories of the two sensations, one of my heart filling and one of it emptying, were divided and lodged in separate bodies. I can still recall the feeling that came over me when my great uncle Harper first placed the record needle onto the spinning 45. It happened right away. I felt that everything deep within my body was rising to the surface, that my skin was growing thin, that I would come apart. If this sounds painful, it wasn't. It was what love did to my body, which was to transform it. I would come apart like a fireworks display, a burst of light that would grow larger and glow and make the person below me say, ah. I remembered saying my great uncle's name aloud. This memory of my first love was then safe from all that was to come. I'll, I'll tell you the easy things first. I'll use simple sentences so factual and flat these statements will land in between us like playing cards on a table. My name is Linda Hamrick. I grew up in Boiling Springs, North Carolina. My parents were Thomas and Deanne. My best friend was named Kelly. I was my father's tomboy. I was my mother's baton twirler. I was my high school's valedictorian. I went far away for college and law school. I live now in New York City. I miss my great uncle Harper. But once these cards have been thrown down, they're bound to be distorting 
overlaps. The head of the queen of spades on the body of the king of clubs. The joker's bowed legs beneath a field of hearts. I grew up in Thomas and Kelly. My parents were valedictorian and baton twirler. My best friend was named Harper. I was my father's New York City. I was my mother's college and law school. I was my high school's tomboy. I went far away for Thomas and Deanne. I live now in Boiling Springs. I miss Linda Hamrick. The only way to sort out the truth is to pick up the cards again, slowly examining each one. My first memory was a taste. For most of my life, I have carried this fact with me, not as a mystery, which it still is, but as a secret. The mystery had two halves. The halves had within them other chambers and cells. There was something bitter in the mouth, and there was the word that triggered it. I'll begin on the side of taste. It was bitter in the way that greens that were good for us were often bitter, or in the way that simmering resentment was bitter. I have not yet found a corresponding flavor in food or in metaphor, but such a match, even if identified, would only allow me the illusion of communication and you the illusion of understanding. I could claim, for example, that my first memory was the taste of an unripe banana, and many in the world would nod their heads familiar with this unpleasantness. But we all haven't tasted the same unripe fruit. In order to feel not so alone in the world, we blur the lines of our subjective memories, and we say to one another, I know exactly what you mean. The other side of the mystery is the word for me, the few words that didn't bring with them a taste were sanctuaries, a cloister in which I could hear their meanings as clear as my own heart beating. The rest of my vocabulary was populated by an order of monks who had broken their vows of silence and in this act had revealed themselves to me not their innermost feelings of sadness or ecstasy, not the colors that they wore underneath their robes, but what they last placed in their mouths. 